Hello. Faster than light is the speed of how things will go from pretty good to my ship is full of holes and everything is on fire. I have been investing my time into it for a bit more than a month now and honestly this is the game that I'd be playing instead of actually listening to my college lectures. And since it's a light game it can probably run a typewriter. So what's the game about? This game is a roguelike, where you will be praying to every god you know, so that missile is not aimed for your weapons. And then forget your one health anyway. Wait, what? Uh, uh. You are being hailed with pleas for mercy? Finish the job. Offer it to buy slaves? Negotiate and get them for free. Being nice does not pay, violence does. Lucky for us, in this dark, grim future, everyone frantically attacks you wherever you go. Like other roguelikes, we get to choose our starting setups and unlock more as we complete runs and challenges, as well as mid-game upgrades and random events, for which we will visit every possible system in every sector. All ships are in a modular system where everything is bound to a room that can be damaged, manned, or upgraded. And sometimes it gets a little too hectic, that's why there is a dedicated pause button that lets you have a moment to think of what exactly you did wrong. <coughs> you see, in FTL, the Geneva Convention is not a concept, so war crimes and human morals are non-existent. And speaking of war crimes, I like to divide all the weapons into four categories. The good, the bad, the niche, and ascended. The flak holds the greatest status and is objectively the best weapon in the entire game, provided it actually hits something. It fires in a shotgun-like spread, pellets the size of a sedan, for 3 damage in total. And if you somehow manage to get your hands on more than one, literally nothing can stop you. No matter how many shields or how much evasion the enemy has, you're at least always gonna do, like, one damage. Hey, more than enough for me. Next, the good category consists of lasers, beams, and ion weapons. While lasers are simple projectiles, beam weapons do more damage across multiple rooms, but are usually stopped by shields. Unless you get your hands on one of these. And lastly, the ion weapons. They do no damage, instead they pop out a little blue ball that will hit a system of choice, and stun in it for quite a while actually. Which is actually extremely useful because while the room is ionized, you can do absolutely nothing with it. And the niche category is not necessarily bad, just so situational, that you would rather use anything else above because you're limited in space. However, some of these weapons are pretty fun to use. And still pretty good for the most part. There are also missile type weapons that I have not yet talked about, and they are overpowered. Just not in your hands. Because you see, missile weapons require missiles, and those cost money. Money, which I do not have. On the other hand, the NPCs do not care about money and do not care about financial stability, so they will dump all of their ammo reserves in a single fight. And what makes it worse is that missile tap weapons go through 5 layers of shields. You only have 4. So you are pretty much guaranteed to take damage every single time they fire it. However, there are some ways to combat them. The races of FTL all have unique traits and abilities. For example, the Mantis are the game's boarding race. They excel at hand-to-hand -hand combat, but they have knives for hands. Personally, when it comes to boarding, I prefer the Rock Knight. They possess 50 more health and are completely immune to fire damage. What I'm trying to say is there is only one thing worse than trying to put out a fire. Another honorable mention are the Lanius, for the simple reason they don't like oxygen, and they don't let anybody else have it either. They also have this funny repair sound. And just as you can board the enemy, the enemy can board you. But lucky for you, with the press of a button and some good IKEA doors, their boarding becomes their own undoing. Drake! 
were supposed to cut it out with the power saw. Dude, I'm gonna. Oh, really? Yes. So go get the power saw. Okay, I will. I see the problem. Oh, do ya? Killing the crew while more difficult is also more rewarding. So arson and asphyxiation is a legit strategy. If setting everything on fire and killing the crew wasn't enough, simply persuade one of their crew members into killing their friends and themselves. And hacking. I think hacking needs a little explaining. Basically, you shoot out a little leech that will attach itself to the room of your choice. And depending on the room that you chose, it will have certain effects. Like sucking out the oxygen, draining shields and weapons, or overdosing them on morphine. And finally, at the end of it all, you have a boss fight. Now this guy's a really big fella. An absolute unit. A fucking pain in my ass! Holy shit is this boss overloaded, he pretty much has every single system in the game at once. This ship is so stacked that even a small mistake or just a stroke of bad luck will turn your ship into Swiss cheese. But sometimes you just become so overpowered that this boss doesn't even put up a real fight. And that's pretty much the game. Honestly, it's a very good game, I would highly recommend it. It's pretty cheap and has high replay value. Overall, I would rate it an 8.5. Desk slams out of 10.